Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And we want to invite everybody, if they haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed to all three channels, Evolutionary E Arts and Hearts Home. And we want to thank our Patreons and also those that are supporting us over at Ko-Fi through these times. So this is Fort Myers Beach. As you can see, water is already making its way in, and Fort Myers is not supposed to bear the brunt of this storm, as it's supposed to be going much further up the coast, but yes, west coast indeed. And here you see a tweet from 46 this morning. He spoke with Governor DeSantis to inform him that we've approved the emergency declaration for Florida already, as they prepare for Hurricane Idalia, and FEMA has been pre-deployed already. Personnel and assets already in place. And, you know, I read some of the comments, and it's like, oh, there are so many that are still completely sound asleep in this world. Or are they just bots? That's really kind of the question. Are they real, or are they just bots? That's another problem that we have, you know, which which is the real humans? Please stand up. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, usually if you want to, you can take the time to feel the energy. But then who really who really wants to take the time to do that? I think once you know what you know and your belief system is where it's at, then just blow everything else off. So as we see, uh, no change in course at this point in time. Uh, currently a category two is uh, they're expecting it's going to make landfall as a category three with the potential to be just maybe a few miles per hour off of category four and we're seeing i was seeing this morning eight to twelve feet um, storm surge and now they're saying 10 to 15 feet storm surge that's that's definitely a problem and the storm surge again tends to be the most destructive initial part of this we do have king tides again it, it is going to be uh again one of those storms where you have some people that think oh it's just all fear mongering nothing's going to happen and then there's people that think of many instances that have turned out to be very very catastrophic in the not too distant past so more people taking it seriously. I myself have ev evacuated from Florida when I was living in Florida in 2017 during a hurricane. It could take an awful long time to get out of Florida. So again, the last message that we have, 5 o'clock, catastrophic impacts from storm surge, inundation 10 to 15 feet above ground level. Just realize, you know, there's a ton of one-level houses in Florida, and if you're talking 15 feet, that means even if you're on the roof, you could be swept off or you're going to be underwater. Yeah, that's not good. I, I would definitely not stay. You know, we need to send a lot of energy and a lot of prayers for these folks that they can get out. Um, that's that's the one thing I've always felt about Florida is I, I've been terrified to be blocked off and not be able to get out. That's just the feeling I get. I get this choked feeling when people are trying to leave. They're somehow going to be blocked. And I, I could never shake that feeling. No. And again, the, the, the guides um, basically as much as I protested and said we could get like over there, maybe right in the corner there. How about right on the Georgia border or Alabama border and and uh, they they said in the times that are coming up you don't want to be right on the coastline and again a lot of people are right on the coastline in fact two-thirds of the population of the United States lie within a hundred miles of the coastline all the way around the country so you know it's going to be a challenging situation to say to say the least and again, it's looking to come in in the Big Bend area north of uh, north of Tampa. And the other thing, too, is when, when we look at this, maybe I'm better off. Well, yeah, you could see like here. It, it, nobody's said this that I'm aware of, but I we have seen storms that have crossed over and then gone out just off the coast into the water and gained strength and make a second um, a second impact later on 
So, you know, be aware of that potential, too. And, you know, it's just waxing poetic with Cindy saying how uh, during the time I was living in Wilmington, as I've lived in uh, many places in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida, man, that beach is beautiful. But boy, the energy and the storms can be rugged. And so again, guys, just be cautious if you are in these areas. And, you know, here we see footage from what they're calling a Ukrainian drone attack uh, that landed in the Bryansk region. And there's sources saying that there's massive drone attacks being reported in Russia. I've heard, you know, sources and I wouldn't verify it. And you don't know if they're being sensationalist or not, but saying, you know, they weren't coming necessarily from Ukraine potentially other NATO territories. Would it surprise me? Not at all. Because, you know, they're getting close. They're watching. They're timing all these things together. And, you know, what are they waiting for? Well, they're waiting for a lot of things. I think they're waiting for a certain number when it comes to the percentage of souls that are heading 4D uh, and leaving 3D, so to speak. You know, they're watching uh, uh, a lot of things they're they're watching the public's reaction how people are handling waking up because a lot of people have been so sound asleep and not Sita Sita's on top of it uh, she's our number one guard dog there she always is on the lookout but a lot of people have been sound asleep and now they're just starting to wake up and realize there's something really wrong here. And for those people, it's pretty shocking, you know, because all their life they believed in the system and they believed and trusted in uh, their D period, R periods. And and they believed in the, the science and they believed in every, you know, all these things that now they're starting to have to question if they have a sane mind. They have to start to question. And so it really, really can be very hard denial is more than a river in Egypt it is you know and it is hard because you grow up and you learn these things from people that are very beloved to you people that you trust and then it's ingrained at such a young age that these are people you're supposed to trust whether it be your DR whether it be your teacher you know people that love you and they do seriously mean well that's the scary part is when they told you at the time they believed what they believe in their in their heart of hearts, so they're telling you out of love, and we're we're up against that understanding and and having people to wake up. And I I really hope, I really hope we wake more up because this is not a good situation. No, and so here's from Food and Agriculture Organization. Working for a sustainable world. Oh, yes. Look at this. Look at the number. What number do they give us? 33% of global soils are degraded. Yeah, our soil is not as nutritious as it was 50 years ago or 100 years ago. In fact, you know, the farming methods that we've utilized and when I look to people, like even some friends of ours, you know, that would say things like, well, you know, all those fertilizer companies going up you know the, 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 they're looking at it from the standpoint we can't feed people well we fed people before they were making chemical fertilizers you know again chemical fertilizers uh people take vitamins but are you taking artificial vitamins i mean where are these finding vitamins going from are they coming from petroleum products that's not going to help you you know, it's just basic stuff that, that people don't know in this world that is so sad. Just basic understanding of, of how things truly wor work. And we've talked about it before that you can see a, a GMO tomato and it looks big and beautiful and perfect, but, but the nutrition in it is, is not going to be there compared to one of those ugly old heirlooms, you know, grown in the backyard. Uh, and the natural way, there'll be more nutrition in that, even though it won't look as good. Again, this this world is all about looks, and it, it lacks substance. This is what the system does. It, it tries to get you to glorify celebrities that you know are obviously not good examples in any way, shape, or form. They're examples of what not to be. 
and yet you know it's cultivated don't you want to be like them the the big cars the you know the fancy houses and everything and then how many of them die of drug overdoses or fall totally apart before your very eyes because they're lacking any substance there's no substance there and unfortunately there's not a lot of substance in our foods especially if you're buying from those middle aisles where it's all prepackaged and has 25 different ingredients in it <laughs> it's crazy and then we wonder why in japan more and more people are getting sick this summer uh-huh not just japan i mean we could pick almost every country across the globe more people are getting sick well because they don't have good immune systems it's because everything that we've been given as priorities is upside down and backwards work on doing the opposite <laughs> work, work on that you know and it really does take time if you're one who's decided to try a more natural approach to things it can take years sometimes to turn that bus around and understand the ins and outs of different natural things natural plant medicine you know and one of the biggest uh tricks i think out there is there's people take in so much sugar and if you're one you want to try a natural healing modality and go toward a, a plant medicine when you bring that herb or that plant or whatever into your body if you are loaded full of sugar that plant cannot send its medicine into your cells because your cells are loaded with sugar they cannot bring in anything so the natural healing modality ends up not working and people are frustrated and they're thinking that that's the problem when reality it's the problem what we've been raised with all along and here we have the study finds the United States is experiencing a crisis of early death. Yes, absolutely. The life expectancy is going down the toilet. And fertility rates going down the toilet. Sperm count, same thing. It goes on and on and on. And it's not just the United States, but the United States is almost leading the pack. Certainly leading the pack when we're talking about industrialized nations. The system it's the system it's just that that obvious now they give us this as life expectancy now again are we going to trust the scientists that tell us this that back in 2000 bc you can only expect to live 18 years 1850 41 i don't know ben franklin was pretty old george washington was pretty old a lot of the founding fathers were pretty old 1950 years 1946, 67, and then 76 in 1991. Well, I don't believe you. I really don't. I, I don't think it's even remotely accurate. You know, there was this one guy that we brought up before, this Chinese Qigong practitioner that was documented, uh, according to the official government records in China, to have lived 256 years. And what Cindy has gotten uh, from the guides is that there were many uh, indigenous Native Americans when the colonists came here that were living very advanced ages, much more than we live now. And what we've seen looking forward is exactly the same. Those that resist the, the system and that choose to live outside the system in harmony with nature will start to live much longer lives and that's right around the corner you know we are just talking like another you know 10 to 20 years like you're going to be seeing life expectancies as long as you don't go along with the system just r rapidly escalating in a positive direction and all we got to do is is look to what they tell us in the vedic sources what, what's this all about? Well, this is us here in a Kali Yuga. We are basically short in stature. We, we live very, very short lives. And we really don't have the wisdom that we do in other ages. We're, connect, we're, we're cut off from source, cut off from nature. When we go into a Bronze Age, we are actually giants compared to what we are now. Oh, well, that not that interesting? Because all those legends about giants that we hear... You know, Genesis 6, which gives you nothing, really. Uh, but you can find stories of giants all around the world. And also bones. I mean, there, there, there are so many newspaper clippings. And, and again, we do have a, uh, 
a, a giants tab under ee arts playlist that you could go and look at uh, there are so many newspaper clippings of them finding sometimes hundreds of bodies of giants seven to nine feet tall all throughout the u.s especially kind of in that center point if you go from Ohio and you go over to Missouri and you come down through Mississippi and Louisiana and Arkansas, you know, the mound building uh, culture, there were so many people. It, and they're everywhere, too. I mean, you could find them out west. You could find them in the east. Uh, these giants. And most of them got snatched up because it was the, the Smithsonian coming along to gather the bodies for uh, uh, scientific studies that, that end up never happening because the bodies are disposed of because they want to dispose of the evidence. So, yeah, humans in the Bronze Age, maybe 7 to 10 feet tall typically, and living up to 1,000 years. So when you see that 969 years by Methuselah, they weren't kidding. They really weren't kidding. So when you see the patriarchal times from the Bible... It starts to make sense. When you look at the Smear and Kings list and you see people living uh, extraordinary lives, some of that is because they're not Homo sapiens. Uh, they're not even from the planet in, in reality. But on the whole, people did m live much longer lives. When we're in the Silver Age, uh, you might have 12 to 16 feet tall people, and you might also. Uh, have people living up to 10,000 years. Then in the Golden Age, it said that humans could live 100,000 years and and also up to 30 feet tall. And, and all this is not only in the Vedic tradition that comes out of the Indus Valley area, again, India, Pakistan, and, and on up a little bit from there, but we also see it ref reflected in the Greek writings. And they talk about the same thing the same thing and they talk about different races of humanoid beings that were destroyed uh, by the gods and particularly by Zeus here yeah and Zeus you know here you go with the Bronze Age that's when they again put their foot down and locked us into the Kali Yuga and you know again why do we not live such long lives well it's really because we follow the system we follow the advice of our oppressors pretty simple and toxins are everywhere they are everywhere and they put them in everything so even if you are trying to live you know a healthy life grow healthy food they find a way to sneak these toxins these heavy metals these you know things that are not so good for your body they find ways to sneak it in in you through other means and then you know even from the sky it, it's everywhere breathing it in it does make it really difficult but there was a time and point on this planet where you could drink from every single stream you could eat fruit from the trees and it, you didn't have to worry about you know things being harmful to you everything was so pristine and so pure the indigenous indigenous beings here it was not uncommon for them to live you know a couple few hundred years old because of the purity of everything that they were taking in even in even if the age was a little bit darker they still brought in the really good food and the stuff that could revitalize the body and rebuild the body and they're just they're taking all of that away you know but if you are awake and you have some awareness you can start to do some you can start to uh really undo some of that damage and, you know, I know when you're explaining these things to somebody for the first time, they might look like this yes. at you. And, and you might have to say, okay, sit down. Uh, it was going to take a little time. We have a, quite a bit of explaining to do. So, you know, again, yeah, for, for those that are just tuning in for the first time, it might sound incredulous. But, in fact, you'll find the same stories all over the globe. And this is why the indigenous people have been always so persecuted, because they hold the knowledge of how things used to be. And how things used to be is how things will be yet again, as this is the last, uh, this is the last gasp of this dying system. You know, who was a really huge part of my awakening was David Icke. And he 
spoke some serious truth but then there came a point when he started speaking of these reptilians and i thought oh no oh no now okay that's just enough i cannot swallow this jagged pill you know talking about humans turning into reptilians but guess what i sat with that for a while and i got that pill down and now it's like if you try to tell me that everything is on the up and up and there is no such thing as reptilians, I, you know, it's like now I'm the reverse. <laughs> like, no, this planet's not that pure. And, you know, the thing is, we, it's not like we're relying on David Icke or any sources because, you know, we've gone within and that's that's part of it is like since the first awakening, it's taking the time to have that spiritual practice. And so you know, already today, and we've been kind of taking it a little bit easy today because we have some um, some issues that we're addressing of a personal nature, but, um, you know, we did 40 minutes of Qigong practice. We're going to go back for another Qigong practice after this video. We already did meditation and mantras this morning. We, we do pretty much two sessions every day. Uh, we We have structured our life around the spiritual life. So, for us, that means the spiritual side of things is priority number one, and it has to be that way. And that's that's the way we really would recommend people to uh, be as much as possible. And and that has not been easy to get to this point. I, I've moved many times. In fact, I've <laughs> moved that famous biblical number. I think this was my fortieth move in my life. Forty is the number of completion. Absolutely. Ah, that's plenty enough for anybody but you know again finding uh that right spot somewhere where affordability practicality and also the ability to manage the the weather the elements as much as possible and you know be off uh well off dependency on the system because that's going to be the way we find our freedom is getting outside of the system that is priority uh, let's say number one A after that spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to still the mind because this is going to help you find the truth. When when you are going through this this journey, you get so much information. My gosh, it's like you know a fire hose of information, and it's just flooding your whole all of your senses. It's like what do you believe? So the best thing you can do is get quiet and allow that information to come to you. Absolutely. So again, thank you guys for being on this journey with us. Much love as always. Much gratitude and appreciation. God bless and namaste. Namaste.